The Pittsburgh Penguins should be embarrassed and ashamed by how much they have failed Sidney Crosby recently, and here is why. Hello guys, and welcome back to Grav Spicy Takes. This week we're taking a look at the disappointing Pittsburgh Penguins and why they have failed Sidney Crosby in the late stages of his career. Now, when we talk about Sidney Crosby's illustrious career, obviously the prime for him is what's mostly talked about, but since he won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in 2016 and 2017 with Pittsburgh, he's been still exceptional. And even though he's turning 36 this year, he's still been one of the best players in the entire league. And it's actually ridiculous just how good Crosby still is and at how high of a level he is too. When we look at the two seasons where the Penguins won the Stanley Cup, 2016 and 2017, and look at the points per game, with Crosby in 80 games in 2016, he had 85 points, got a 1.06 points per game. In 2017, he got 89 points in 75 games for 1.19 points per game. But since then, entering his mid-30s, Crosby has continued to be stellar. In 2018, he got a 1.09 points per game. In 2019, a 1.27 points per game. Then in 2020, 1.15. In 2021, a 1.13. And then these last two years, being 34, 35, Crosby's gotten a 1.22 points per game and a 1.21 points per game on a dwindling Pittsburgh team. But to say that this man has aged like fine wine would be a disservice to how well this man has aged. Last year, he was tied in points with Jay Gensel in a little bit fewer games. This year, though, he's 11 points above the highest Penguin score, with Malkin having 58 points and Crosby having 69 nice points in 57 games. I mean, my goodness, the dude is fifth in even strength points, only behind Eric Carlson, Elias Pettersson, Matthew Kachuk, and Connor McDavid. He has still been one of the best players in the league, one of the best five on five producers in the league, and this is what the Penguins have to show for it? With Sidney Crosby being one of the best five on five producers in the league, one of the top scorers in the league, and on pace for 99 points, the Pittsburgh Penguins are 27, 21, and 9. They have a minus three goal differential. They're 3, 6, and 1 in their last 10. And are outside a playoff spot. Great job, guys. But all you gotta do is look at the two big trades that the Penguins made this last offseason, both in the Jeff Petrie and John Marino deals. First is the Petrie trade, which acquired Petrie and Paling from the Habs in exchange for Matheson and a 2023 fourth round pick. And even though you got rid of the bloat of the Matheson contract, it really didn't add too much to the roster with Petrie playing pretty decent in the games he has played this year, but he makes $6.25 million for the next two seasons afterwards. And although he's been fine when he has played, he definitely hasn't been worth that type of cap hit. And it just adds to the bloat of Pittsburgh. Every single penny matters when you're so tight to the cap like the Penguins are, but adding even more to acquire a player like Petrie just didn't make much sense to me. The only real way it could have worked out is if Jeff Petrie unlocked that 2021 form, but we have just not seen him from that this year. And then we go on to the even more confusing trade in the John Marino deal, which sent Marino to the Devils in exchange for defensive prospect Ty Smith and a 2023 third round pick back to Pittsburgh. Now, obviously this was a cap deal, but considering the circumstances and the, the, the consequences of the deal, since then it's been a disaster. Not only did they send Marino to any team, they sent him to the New Jersey Devils, a division rival, and Marino has been instrumental towards the Devils' rising success, being not just one of the best defensive players on New Jersey, but in the entire league. And he was already kind of that on Pittsburgh and would have been absolutely fundamental to the team this year. But no, if you have the chance to acquire Jeff Petrie at $6.25 million for the next two seasons, you just gotta do it. But you look at some of the other blow on the roster, and especially that bottom six, which has been historically bad for Pittsburgh. You look at Kasperi Kapanen making $3.2 million for this year and next. He's got 20 points in 43 of the games this year, but the overall game has been non-existent. Also got Jeff Carter making $3.1 million, who has been awful, absolutely abysmal on that third line. 20 points in 54 games, and especially in 2023, has been nowhere to be seen. You also, again, on that third line, have Brock McGinn making two points. 75 million dollars for the next two seasons after this he has 15 points this year and hasn't gotten a point in 24 straight games you have an entire third line making just over nine million dollars that has scored eight points combined all in 2023 between Kapanen, carter and mcginn they have eight total points combined almost a million 
per point in 2023. What are we doing here? What, what, what are we doing here? But just look at what the Penguins have done since 2017, and it's eye-opening. In 2018, they lost in Game 7 against the Capitals in the second round. But since then, first-round exit, couldn't even win a qualifying round series against the Montreal Canadiens, lost against the New York Islanders in 2021. In 2022, lost in the first round against the New York Rangers and absolutely choked that series away. And then this year, they might not even make the playoffs. Crosby has continued to be one of the best players in the league, and they can't even get past the first round. But the reason all of this is so frustrating is because this is it. Sidney Crosby has three years left in his contract. He's turning 36 this August. Even though he has aged like fine wine, that might not stay forever. And you have this Pittsburgh team that has surrounded him with continual mediocrity. They have not gotten past a first round. They have not won a round since 2018. And even then they got bopped by the Washington Capitals. They have had no success, no glimmer of success and continual playoff failure because these rosters around Crosby are simply just not good enough. But I also want to know in the comments down below, what do you guys think of the Penguins since 2017? How embarrassing do you think they've been? Do you think they can still do a lot this year? Let me know what moves you think Ron Hextall should make too. What trades, what immediate moves, and what should they do next to make sure that this isn't another wasted year under Cindy Crosby? Let us know your thoughts down below. Of course, share the video of all the hockey fans you guys know online. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. And I'll see you next week for next week's Spicy Takes. Goodbye.